Have you ever seen stickers of people's fursonas and wish you had some too? Do other furries make fun of you for not having your fursona plastered over every inch of your laptop? Do you too want to deface public property with degenerate nonsense? Well today is your day survivor, cause today Sunday is going to teach you the secrets to getting the best stickers anyone has ever seen. These techniques I'm sharing will go from least effort to most effort depending on how cool you are and how much money you have, but mostly the cool part. To help me today, I have two guests, a pair of hands from the third dimension and the spirit of Mango Foxy who has kindly volunteered to be our test subject today. So without further ado, let's bite into it. Let's start with the method that takes the least effort, throwing money at someone and making it their problem. Now, my website isn't done. Oh wait, that's supposed to be a secret. You can find sellers all over the internet for this, but I prefer Etsy because it supports smaller artists and not massive companies. Keep your money in the fandom. There are also a ton to choose from, so you should be able to find any style. There are, however, three downsides to ordering like this. One, shipping times. Shipping times are sometimes insane for a paper product. Two to three weeks is what I usually see, which in my opinion is a long time to wait for a sticker, especially if you have a con coming up and you want to bring some. Two, reliability is sometimes fickle. Don't get me wrong, 90% of the sellers will do you right as long as you're looking at reviews and pick one with a history of good work, but there's always that 10% chance they will send you a poor product or nothing at all. And three, you have no control on the product. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Some will work with you, but many just print and ship. But if you have the cash and you're okay with these three things, then ordering is probably the best choice. But let's say you want to dive deeper, get a little more hands-on. The next step is the cheapest option and the first step to making your own. We'll start with buying sticker paper. You can get a whole pack of the stuff for like $5 online, which gives you plenty of extras if you make a mistake. Then you just draw away like you would on regular paper. The trick is to buy non-vinyl matte paper. The vinyl stuff, you may have difficulty drawing on it, especially if it's glossy. After that, you have an option to buy adhesive laminate to lay over your sticker and give it some added protection. But if it's gonna be something in your house that isn't gonna rub against anything, then you can kinda skip that step. Laminate really just keeps your sticker from getting sunbaked or washing off easily with water. If you do apply the laminate, make sure you use a credit card or squeegee to push out all the bubbles. Also make sure to go slow, cause once that stuff's on, it is not coming off. This method is great if you plan to make one of one stickers and enjoy the freedom and control that comes with your own art. It's also cheap and quick, so no worries if you need to decorate your laptop or bottle in a flash. But let's say you want the control, but also want like 10 or 20 stickers, or you wanna use digital art you've already made. Well then, now it's time to start whipping out the machines. Luckily, most people seem to have access to a printer, so this will be easier for most of you survivors. All we're going to do is order that vinyl sticker paper we said to avoid last time and throw it in the tray. Make sure, however, it has the correct side facing the correct way for your printer. We don't want to print on the back side of the paper. Also make sure your printer is an inkjet style printer. This won't work with laser style printers. After it prints out, you can follow the same steps as before with the optional laminate and then cutting. Now, you might be saying, but Sunday, I want stickers to be complex shapes and it takes too long with scissors. Plus, I keep cutting off my fingers. Well, the last method's for you. We're pulling out the big guns with the cutting machines. There are two major brands of non-industrial cutting machines, Silhouette and Cricut. Today, we're going to be using my Cricut Maker 3. You can get these for $400 to $600, so it's definitely a price jump. But I use mine for more than just stickers, so it's worth it for me. However, if you're just planning on making stickers and nothing else, then you can get a Cricut Explore or another cutting machine for much cheaper. We'll start by going into our cutting machine software, open that up, then upload the art and place it on the grid. Once we have it all on there, let's go to the print then cut option to send the project to our printer. Just like before, we've loaded the printer with vinyl sticker paper, which we can have matte, glossy, reflective, etc. Which, if you were ever wondering how companies make those shiny, reflective stickers, that's how they do it. They just print on reflective paper. Once it prints out, we'll cut out the laminate and place it on top. The reason we're cutting the laminate instead of just putting it over the whole page like before is that these machines use a laser to scan for that black bar you see around the project. 
It uses that to tell the position of the project and then make cuts. If the surface has laminate or is too shiny, the laser can have trouble locating the sticker and cutting in a completely wrong area. Once that is on, we'll insert it into the machine and press play. Then you can sit back and watch the magic. Now, there's a lot that can go wrong with this method. Learning how to fix errors and set up perfect settings can be an art on its own. But once you figure it out, you can make anything. When it's done cutting, we just peel the project off the cutting mat and voila, a professionally done sticker. Now you can go make the whole world your doodle pad and decorate the wasteland with all the furry art you can come up with. While I could definitely go into more detail on each one of these, how to fix mistakes, how to make things cleaner, etc, etc, I don't have time to record it today. But if that's something you want to see, then leave it in the comments. Also, I'd love to hear which method you want to use and why. Now, I also like to make metal buttons, t-shirts, mugs, and other things as well in my free time, and I'd love to show y'all how to do it as well. I also want to give a special thanks to Mango Foxy for letting me use him in my little experiments. His channel is linked in the description, so please go check him out. But for now, stay safe out there in the Wasteland Survivor, or you may end up like me.